Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, something you may have heard about or read about, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And if you have a success story you'd like to share, we especially love hearing those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program or join the Brightside Ben team, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team or purchase products off our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. We also have blog posts and news stories, and we have an archive page as well up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Also want to give a shout out to my friend Kevin in Moscow, Russia, who posts our YouTube videos, or our uh, Brightside on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, get these, I think you just if you just Google YouTube and the Bright Side, you can get all of our programs commercial free. Thank you, Kevin, for setting that up. And you can also get those on my Facebook page, uh, The Truth With Ben. Uh, and that's also my skin blog page. I also have uh, other other uh, skin, health in, uh, skin health posts and skin health news at The Truth With Ben. And periodically we do specials for our truth treatment products at The Truth With Ben. That's my Facebook page. If you tried to Facebook me or uh, friend me on my personal page, I don't really check that page too often, but I update the, Facebook, uh, the professional page, The Truth With Ben, pretty regularly. Also, if you want to purchase any of our True Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with thinning skin, aging skin, dark spots, acne, Retinol is what you're looking for. Retinol, and retinol as well as vitamin C, are the only two topical ingredients that can activate those all-important fibroblasts, which we're going to be talking about here momentarily. In fact, I designed the Truth, the Truth Skin Health, uh, my Truth Skin Health products to do just that. That's the raison d'etre, the reason for the existence of our Truth Skin Health products is to drive the production of connective tissue, to drive the production of collagen, to drive the production of high hyaluronic acid in the matrix, to drive the production of elastin, the fiber that makes the skin elastic and bouncy. It's all about the connective tissue when it comes to skin health. And that's why it's all about the connective tissue when it comes to health in general. Connective tissue is important for the structure of the body, for the electrical nature of the body, for the blood flow of the body, for the nourishment of all the cells. It's all about the connective tissue. The connective tissue is the star of the show when it comes to the body's health and when it comes to the body's appearance, and that includes the health of the skin, and that includes the appearance of the skin. If your topical skincare products are not driving the production of connective tissue, you're wasting your money, at least in terms of anti-aging the skin. Also in terms of moisturizing the skin, because skin moisturization depends on the connective tissue as well. To build connective tissue in the skin, you've got to be 
activating the fibroblast. This is what we talked about yesterday. It's all about the fibroblast. If the connective tissue is the mother of the body or the mother of the cells, the fibroblast is the mother of the connective tissue. It's the king of the connective tissue. It's the holy grail of the connective tissue. In the world of skin care, enhancing, activating, turning on the production of fibers as well as jelly material out of the fibroblast is the holy grail. Fibroblasts are our cells of anti-aging. There are cells of youthfulness. There are cells of repair. There are cells that uh, they are our cells that are responsible for keeping the body, uh, giving the body, contributing to the body, the appearance of youth and health. They are the cells that are responsible for healing as well as the cells that are responsible for the excessive secretion of fibers. When the body is in constant repair mode, secretion of fibers will proceed at an accelerated pace. This can lead to something called fibrosis. Now, you've heard the term fibrosis if you're involved in any way in health. If you're interested in health, you've got to have heard the term fibrosis zillions of times. Fibrosis is a major mechanism of disease, and it is the sign of excessive repair, which in turn is obviously the sign of excessive damage. If you have any condition that involves fibrosis, you want to consider that the body is attempting to repair a chronically damaged area. And this is why fibrosis is associated with aging. It's associated with early demise. It's associated with disease. Fibrosis, while it is functional, the body doesn't do things that aren't functional. While fibrosis is functional, over the course of time, fibers being hard can, pre, uh, can prevent the, uh, the delivery of nutrients, can prevent the delivery of oxygen, can prevent the removal of toxicity. Fibers act like a little wall to sequester a damaged area, to protect a damaged area, which is a good thing, but when it occurs excessively, it can block nutrient delivery, it can block oxygen delivery, and it can block detoxification, which leads to more damage, which leads to more fibrosis, and this is where the downward spiral, the vicious downward cycle of disease, of chronic degenerative disease begins. This is how it begins. This is how it proceeds. When you hear a doctor saying uh, you have a chronic degenerative disease, that's medical talk where we don't know what the heck is going on and we can't do anything about it because they don't understand biochemistry. The lack of understanding of the medical model of the fibroblast, of the repair mechanism of fibrosis is the quintessential example of the distinction the very under-recognized distinction between clinical chemistry, clinical medicine, and biochemistry, biochemical medicine. Your doctor is not a biochemist. He's a clinician. And this is such an important distinction because it is at the core of the failure of the medical model to address disease. Clinical chemistry is the chemistry of the clinic. It's the chemistry of symptoms. It's the chemistry or, or the healing uh, not, not even healing, I don't want to say healing, it uh, represents the strategy of the medical model to prevent or to reduce or to mitigate symptomology, not to mitigate causes, not to address causes. Clinical chemistry is not about causes. If you're sick, go to a biochemist, not a doctor, if you really want to address the problem. The problem is in the biochemistry. It's not in the symptomology. It has nothing to do with your test scores. And by the way, this is my beef with so-called functional medicine. Medicine these days, at least savvy, savvy medical professionals understand that the clinical model addressing symptomology is a failure. So now they have something they call functional medicine, where instead of just addressing symptoms, what they'll do is they'll do test scores. They'll give you thyroid tests, and they'll give you intestinal permeability tests, and they'll give you blood, blood sugar tests. And then they'll dose you, not, a, not based on your, uh, and dose means poison you, by the way. Then they'll dose you or poison you with drugs, not based on the symptoms, but based on your test scores. This is equally stupid. And functional medicine is only slightly more intelligent than typical medicine. That's my beef with functional doctors, by the way. Anyway, it's all about the fibroblast, the quintessential cell of youth. The fibroblasts keep our skin beautiful, they keep our bones strong, they keep our posture and our appearance youthful and healthy and beautiful. It's all about the fibroblasts, folks. And activating the fibroblasts 
is what we're looking for when it comes to good skin care products. We'll talk about, that, we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, anything we're speaking about here today, fibroblasts, healing, fibrosis, skin health questions. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products, our Retinol 5% Gel or Truth Serum or Truth Balm or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Rennell Wood, author of a really cool book called Touching Light, How to Free Your Fiber Optic Fascia. We touched on this a couple of weeks ago. I'm not done talking about fascia yet. That stuff is amazing. Fascia is the rubber band-like material that gives our body its dynamic nature. The uh, muscles, you know, muscles don't really propel us. The, it's not the muscles that cause movement in the body. It's the fascia and the connective tissue. The muscles provide the energy, but it's the pulling action of the connective tissue and the fascia that really gives us our, our ability to locomote, to move. But as it turns out, the fascia also conducts electrical energy, and it conducts light energy. It's fiber optic. And this is what Renell Wood, in her book, Touching Light, uh, talks about, and also what she'll be talking about tomorrow uh, when she's on the bright side. Touching Light by Renell Wood, R-O-N-E-L-L. Renell Wood, W-O-O-D. It's really easy to read. A book, it's only about 150 pages or so, but it's got lots of good information about the connective tissue and the fascia. We'll be talking to Renell tomorrow on the bright side. Okay, got lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our next segment, as we always do on the bright side. We're talking about the skin and the fibroblasts. The fibroblasts keep our skin, or the cells that are responsible for producing the fibers, as well as the hyaluronic acid. Lots of folks know about hyaluronic acid these days, even if it's hard to pronounce, high al uronic acid. If you're using a skincare product that has high aluronic acid in it, you're not getting any anti-aging benefits from it, period. Don't fall for it. High aluronic acid has become like a buzzword in the skincare business. Lots of over-the-counter products now contain the stuff. But what's really kind of a bummer is there's a lot of skincare professionals who are recommending and are suggesting and who are looking for high aluronic acid under the uh, laboring under the illusion or the delusion that somehow applying high aluronic acid to the top of your skin is going to make a difference in the health of the skin. It doesn't because high aluronic acid, for the most part, lives in the lower levels. There is a little bit on the surface, and as it turns out, some skin cells can make, in addition to fibroblasts, your surface skin cells can make some of the stuff, but for the most part, the hyaluronic acid is connective tissue, meaning uh, it lives in the lower levels in the dermis. If you want to leverage the power of hyaluronic acid, you want to turn on the fibroblasts. That's the key. That is the key right there, turning on the fibroblasts. When it comes to topical products, anti-aging products, so-called wrinkle creams, these products are only going to be as effective as, as far as they can activate the fibroblasts or encourage or enhance or support the secretions from the fibroblasts. If an ingredient or if a product is not able to access, to number one, access the fibroblast, remember it's in the dermis, it's got to access the fibroblast. If your skincare product cannot or your skincare ingredients cannot access the fibroblast, they're not going to have any anti-aging properties. If your ingredient or product is not, number two, able to turn on the fibroblast, again, it's not going to be an anti-aging product. It's going to be a pretend product. It's going to be a pretend active, and I'm sad to report that that's, this is the vast majority of skin skincare products. It's a deceitful business for the most part, the skin skincare product business. In other words, in the world of skincare, the world of chemistry, in the world of aesthetics, in the world of dermatology, anti-aging ingredients are going to be measured largely by how well they turn on the fibroblasts. And while it's true, there are many ingredients that can turn on the fibroblasts theoretically, many plant compounds, particularly polysaccharides and sugars, herbal ingredients, amino acids. When it comes to actual effects, when it comes to real life in vivo, that is real life turning on the fibroblasts, because of their location deeper, uh, relatively deep in the dermis, you're not going to be able to practically do it with a skincare product unless 
you're talking about vitamin C and retinol. This is the reason why Truth Treatment products feature vitamin C and retinol. These are the only two ingredients that can actually literally activate the fibroblast via contact. Now, it's true alpha hydroxy acids, glycolic acid, lactic acid, acetic acid, apple cider vinegar, aloe, various products that contain alpha hydroxy acids and salicylic acid, which is technically called a beta hydroxy acid. It is true that you can activate fibroblasts by using these kinds of techniques and also exfoliation in general. That is removing the surface of the, uh, the cells off the surface of the skin. That can have a, 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 a upregulating, I love that word, upregulating or stimulating effect on the fibroblast, but not via contact. It's a secondary mechanism. In other words, you exfoliate the skin and you lower the pH of the skin via these acidic materials. It's always important to lower the pH of the skin. Most skincare lotions and creams and almost all skincare cleansers are not acidic. They're alkaline. This slows down chemistry on the skin. Alkaline is, has a relaxing effect. That's why you want the inside of your body to be alkaline. You probably heard of alkalinizer dyeing. You probably heard of alkalinizing products. And the notion of alkal alkalinizing the inside of the, uh, the body, particularly the blood, raising the pH, making something less acidic, that has a relaxing, a slowing down effect. The skin is dynamic. The skin is in this constant battle with the environment. It's protective. So nature has mandated that the skin will be acidic. There's acid on the surface of the skin. They call that the acid mantle. It's made up largely of fatty acids. And these fatty acids play a very important role in the health of the skin. The acidic nature of the skin needs to be maintained for its health. Skin diseases are associated with less acidity on the skin. Skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema and dermatitis, these are associated with alkalinity on the skin, and this is exacerbated by most cleansers and most topical products. You want your topical products to be slightly acidic, not super acidic, but slightly acidic, and you want your topical products, if they're not going to be slightly acidic, to have no pH at all. My Truth Treatment products don't have pHs. They're non-acidic and they're non-alkaline. But for stimulating, for turning things on, you want to be acidic. For turning things on, specifically the fibroblasts, you want to not only be acidic, but you also want to exfoliate. And this is where alpha hydroxy acids can be so beneficial. The skin is multi-layered. This is so darn important. I know I say it all the time, but it's very easy to forget. We look at the skin, it looks uniform. It doesn't look multi-layered. And then we're induced, we're suckered into believing that we can just rub stuff on the surface and we'll create changes in the skin. But you can't do it that way. 90% of the skin is located where you have no access. It's in the dermis. The skin is, uh, is multi-layered. There's three layers to the skin. The surface of the skin, the stratum corneum, is about as thick as a tenth of a, a piece of notebook paper. The epidermis underneath is about as thick as one piece of notebook paper. And the uh, dermis is like nine or ten pieces of notebook paper, nine or ten times the depth of the epidermis and the, uh, and the stratum corneum. There's blood underneath in the dermis. The blood supply is in the dermis. If you cut yourself and you see blood, you're looking at the dermis. The surface has no blood. The surface, the very tippy top, is just basically dead material. As you get lower and lower, you get into more cells, but there's no vascularity. There's no blood. If you see blood, you're in the connective tissue. If you've got a blood problem like bruising or, or redness or what they call petechiae, as we spoke about yesterday, you've got a connective tissue problem. All right, 844 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will get your calls here in just a moment. If you're on hold, hang on. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please head over to truthtreatments.com. got blog posts up as well as our Retinol 5% Gel and Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you're dealing with aging skin or broken out skin, if you have acne, also we have our Blemish Repair Complex, which I don't talk about anywhere near enough. Blemish Repair Complex is made with all my favorite anti-acne, uh, all my favorite anti-acne nutrients, NAC and vitamin E and vitamin A and zinc. Zinc is stupendously important for skin health. 
In fact, I would go as far as to say it is the most important mineral for the skin, maybe the most important nutrient for keeping the skin healthy. Not only is zinc important for uh, as an anti-acne treatment, but zinc, as it turns out, is also very important for helping heal the skin. Zinc is important for those all-important um, uh, all uh, fibroblasts. Now, you're not going to be able to use zinc topically to activate the fibroblasts, not to any great effect, unless you, uh, unless you have a wound of some kind, because remember, the fibroblast is located deep inside the skin, in the dermis, and it's very difficult to get that zinc down in the dermis. Nonetheless, supplementing with zinc can be a very important strategy if you're trying to heal. Zinc is stored in the skin, and substantial amounts of zinc are stored in the skin for good reason. When you cut yourself, wound yourself, burn yourself, zinc is mobilized. It's uh, sent over, it migrates to the wounded area to stimulate the production of connective tissue. Zinc is a major player in the production of connective tissue. Reading from the Proceedings of, Na of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, released just this week, zinc, a surprise target in regenerating the optic nerve after injury. Yesterday we talked to a gentleman who had a problem with his optic nerve. A nerve damage following a stroke. We talked a little bit about using anti-diabetic strategies. Well, zinc, in addition to being very important for helping stimulate the production of connective tissue, is also important for helping the body process sugar. Zinc is a major player in health, and zinc deficiency is unfortunately very common. According to this article from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, zinc is released as a result of injury to the optic nerve and it uh, allows, quote, cells to live longer, perhaps indefinitely, with dramatic levels of axon, that is nerve cell, regeneration in a mouse model, unquote. That's from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences about zinc. Along the same lines, association of zinc with connective tissue in the digestive tract of fish, common carp. This is uh, from the journal Fishery Science. This was published back in 2006. Zinc concentration in the digestive tract of common carp is always 10 times higher than other animal tissues. Now, certainly we can't always extract information or extrapolate information, I should say, from carp to humans, but nonetheless, the fact is that zinc is important for the production of connective tissue in animals as well as in human beings. From the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, this one's really neat. Gelatin supplements, good for your joints. Well, no kidding. Yes, it's good for your joints. Why? Gelatin is connective tissue, folks. When you eat gelatin, you're eating connective tissue. This is why, why women for centuries have used gelatin as a beauty aid. Gelatin turns on the production of connective tissue. According to this article from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in uh, the January uh, issue, new study from Keith Barr's Functional Molecular Biology Laboratory at UC Davis College of Biological Sciences, consuming a gelatin supplement plus, check this out, consuming a gelatin supplement plus a burst of intensive exercise can help build ligaments, tendons, and bones. Now there's two factors here, folks. Consuming the gelatin supplement plus a burst of intensive exercise. It's the combination. This is so, so, so important. The combination of bursts of intense exercise plus nutrition is how we build. Bursts, that means quick. That means intense. Bursts of intensive exercise. Not taking a walk around the block. That's not the same thing. And not staying in the gym for an hour, an hour and a half. We're talking bursts of intense exercise, such as weightlifting or maybe sprinting on a treadmill and then coming home and doing a gelatin supplement. We talk about the pig pack or the uh, glucogel caps from Longevity, which are part of our pig pack. Well, when the glucogel caps, we feature or we talk about or we highlight the glucosamine, but the gelatin is just as important. The glucosamine is important, yes, but the gelatin provides you with the building blocks for making collagen. This makes gelatin so vital. Of course, gelatin is an animal product. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you're out of luck because you're, there's no plant gelatin and there's no replacement for gelatin. So gelatin plus a burst of intensive exercise can help build ligaments, tendons, and bones. And you can apply the same uh, logic to the skin. Bursts of intensive exercise on the skin uh, can be analogous, or bursts of intensive exercise can be analogous on the skin to using alpha hydroxy acids, to skin peels, 
a skin peel or a drop in pH, a quick drop in pH in the skin is like exercising the skin. And then you follow that up with topical nutrition, topical retinol, topical vitamin C, and you can duplicate or you can have the same kind of effects on the skin that you do when you have a quick burst of intense exercise and take a gelatin supplement orally. Ex you can exercise your skin using alpha hydroxy acids. This is this was one of the insights. This is how I developed my first skincare company, is because I was working out. I was in the gym and I noticed and I knew that that's how you build muscle and that's how you build connective tissue internally. So it just made sense to me. We could do the same things topically, and I started a, a business that featured alpha hydroxy acids and topical nutrients. Sold it a couple years ago, and now I have the truth. But the idea was to take understandings from the world of, of bodybuilding and the world of weightlifting and the world of athletics and apply it to the skin. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let us welcome John from Texas to the bright side. Good morning, John. Ooh, what was that? John, do we have John? John? Uh, I'm not sure what happened to John. Is John there? I think John's trying to dial in. John, hang on there. I'm going to take another call, and then we'll get to you in a second. So fix your phone. Uh, we'll get to you in just a moment, John. Don't go away. Let me try John one more time. John, are you there? I don't know where John went. I don't have access to John. Hang on, John. We'll get to you in a second here, so don't go away. Uh, let's go to uh, Cheryl in Georgia. Good morning, Cheryl. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. What's going on? Uh, well, gosh, there's somebody saying hello over the phone. I don't know. Um, I just got my blood report back, and okay. I've been trying to go all natural and in the 90 for life and all of this. And, oh, my tish level. Your tish all, level? Your tush yeah. level? What, no, your butt? It, it, I, no. <laughs> well, it's, it's I can't help you with your tush, but I might be able to help you with your tish. Your, your thyroid stimulating hormone, is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it, it went from a 1.7 to a 31.7. Three, four. Well, obviously, that's a, there's an issue there, but I don't really care about the numbers. I want to know how you feel, Cheryl. How do I you feel? feel? Great. I told the doctor. I said I feel great. You're not. Sometimes you're not lethargic. Your skin is not really dry. Your hair is not falling out. You're not gaining my a lot hair, of weight. My, no, I've lost fifty pounds. And then, my for, hair, then don't worry about it. In my opinion, I think that's. I, I think hair, these numbers. Yeah. Go ahead. My hair. My hair stopped falling out when I got off the Leverthorox. Isn't that interesting? Well, here's because the deal. One of the side of, that's one of the side effects is hair loss. Well, hang on, okay. Cheryl. Don't go away. But you're raising a very, very good point. You know, doctors, this is what I was talking about earlier in the program. Doctors, ignorant doctors, not all doctors, ignorant doctors treat test scores. Intelligent healthcare professionals treat human beings. You're a human being. You're not a number. You're not a test score. Hang on. Don't go away. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up, uh, Cheryl, when we come back. And, John, don't go away either. I want to get to you next. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Cheryl in Georgia about her thyroid. You there, Cheryl? Yeah, I'm here. I'm All here. Right. I'm just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just so abnormally high um, because the last one was... Do you feel one great? One. You said you feel great, right? I feel good, yeah. All right. Well, good or great? <laughs> and sometimes, you know, by the way... It, it goes between good and great. With okay, the, good. Uh, You're sleeping good? With you're with, sleeping good? I never, I never sleep good. Um, right, well, so here's the thing, though, Cheryl, with all due respect, okay? I don't, you're saying you feel good and you feel great, but I don't know if that's true because you may have set the bar really low. So I can only go by what you're telling me, but I suspect that you may not have a good, me you, you may not be using good metrics to determine what good or great is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not beating you up. I'm not trying to be mean here, but if we're used well, to feel... If we're used to feeling a certain way, and then all of a sudden we feel a little bit better, we may think that we're doing great, but it could be that we're just doing a little better than crappy. I don't know. I'm not, and I'm not beating you up. I'm just saying, I don't know. So here's the deal. What you want to, if you want to stay healthy, you want to maximize your health, you don't pay attention to your TSH or other test scores. The uh, failure of the TS, uh, uh, of thyroid treatment is legendary legendary in pharmacy. We all know that Synthroid doesn't work. We, uh, did they give you Synthroid? Of course they did. Synthroid is yeah, the wrong well, kind of thyroid hormone. Let me just finish real quick. Yeah. Synthroid, ask any pharmacist, they'll tell you Synthroid is a failure treatment. 
The dose constantly has to be changed. It's the wrong thyroid hormone. If you have a thyroid problem, you don't have a thyroid hormone problem. You got a gland problem, and you haven't done anything to fix the gland when you take your Synthroid. Even more uh, fundamentally, the test scores for thyroid, the test the measurements for thyroid are notoriously inaccurate, especially the TSH. Endocrinologists and doctor and medical school trained doctors are taught to use the TSH. That's supposed to lead the gold standard. Unfortunately, as you are pointing out, your treatment was worse than, than uh, the symptoms. Of your, uh, your symptoms got worse after you had, were treated. You got off the Synthroid and your hair stopped falling out. And by the way, it's not uncommon for people's hair to fall out when they're on Synthroid. So here's what you need to do, all right? And this is very important because this is what everybody needs to do. We all have the same human bodies in terms of its parts, in terms of its chemistry, in terms of its components. So you got to do what I got to do. You got to do what somebody who has arthritis has to do. You have to do what somebody who has cancer has to do. You have to do what somebody who is healthy has to do. That is, number one, focus on digestive health. Eliminate problem foods. If you have any digestive uh, symptomology, constipation, which goes hand in hand with hypothyroidism, uh, are you constipated? And, and don't, you don't even have to tell me now. Just pay attention to that because that's okay. a classic yeah. sign of hypothyroidism. So work on digestive health. Eliminate problem foods. Uh, make sure that you're eating uh, going uh, low, cal, uh, low calorie, making sure you're nutriated appropriately, using probiotics. Act, uh, thyroid hormone is activated by good bacteria. So your thyroid hormone, which is inactive at the level of the thyroid, it's called T4, is turned on into active thyroid hormone in the intestine by gut bacteria into T3. So uh, make sure you're working on gut health. Keep your blood sugar stable. And thirdly, make sure you're relaxing the body under chronic cortisol secretion, chronic mm -hmm. adrenal activity, which exactly. is measured by lack of sleep, by the way, your thyroid will start to slow down. These are much more effective strategies than taking Synthroid or Levothyroxine or Cytomel or whatever, whatever kind of prescription drug you're, you're, you've been given for your thyroid. Does that help uh, you? I wouldn't pay attention to the number. I would be going by the symptoms. All right? Okay. Okay. Now, my T4 went from a one6 to a point six nine, and they say that that's low. You, well, it doesn't matter, sweetheart. This is what I'm yeah. telling you, Cheryl. Those numbers are arbitrary. They're based on statistics. They're based on reference ranges. They're an insult to humanity. They're treating okay. you like a number. Who cares what the number is? You follow me? The num You know yeah. how they? You know how they? They decide if it's low or high. They have these things called reference ranges. Do you know what I'm talking about? They take right, a thousand yeah. people. They do statistics. They take a 1,000 people, they see what their symptoms are, they see what normal is, and they do some kind of statistical algorithms, and they put it in a computer, and they come up with what's called a reference range. So your 0.69 is not significant because it's only compared to other people. You're a unique human being in terms of your biochemical numbers. We don't know if it's high or low. That's why you go by symptoms. Skin is a major symptom for hypothyroid, a major a diagnostic tool for hypothyroidism. That is skin health, especially dry skin, especially excessively dry skin. I'm not saying all dry skin is a thyroid problem, but if it's excessively dry, that's a pointer. Hair falling out is another sign. Thinning nails is another sign. Digestive health problems, particularly constipation, is another sign. So you want to go by your symptomology. Okay. You, know, you, you follow me? And based on what you're telling me, you don't have any. So I wouldn't be well, worried about it at all. They had me on a bio, uh, uh, antibiotic um, there for a while because, remember, I was the one that called you up and said that I gave my doctor the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, yeah. I hope. No, no, you did. No, it's because I had surgery on it, and so. Oh it was, yeah. Okay, it I got remember. Pretty infected. Yeah, it got pretty infected. Um, okay. The stitches down there wouldn't go away. They said they were dissolvable, did not dissolve. They put the I know they put the wrong ones in because they kept trying to come up, come up, come up. Well, I finally got them out. So, anyway, but anyway, I was on a sulfur drug there for a while. Boy, I hated well, doing that one. Well, that'll but, kill the gut um, bacteria, and you don't have any digestive health issues after that. No. Well, I've been taking probiotics. Well, no. Listen, do you have any digestive health issues? No, not really. I mean, I think well, no, uh, Cheryl. You can't say not I mean, really. I, I no, I, I don't think I'm the constipation. I don't think that I'm. Okay, well, I would be probing a little bit, of, Cheryl. I'm going to move on here, but listen to me. Okay. I would be probing because I'm suspecting there's stuff in there that you're not noticing or that you're glossing over. 
because it okay. does sound to me like something's going on in your body. The fact that your well, thyroid... Think... Go ahead. Yeah, the, the world situation... <laughs> well, don't let the world situation mess up your health. That's not going not gonna to do you any good. Mm-hmm. And I know what you're saying. And I, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago. I said I stopped watching the news after uh, yeah. November 11th, and uh, I feel a lot better. And I, we had a caller who said the same thing. So don't pay attention. If some, you're listening to the radio or you're listening to the Internet or you're listening to the news right. and something's making you scared and some guy's screaming and, you know, about, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. don't pay attention. To turn it off. It's not helping you. you got your life to live. Anytime some radio person or television person or internet person is making you feel freaked out or scared or worried, it's not in your interest. You know, that's called fear mongering. They call that fear mongering, all right? And that doesn't help anybody. Yes, I know there's problems. I understand. I'm not Pollyannish about it. But fear mongering doesn't help our health. If you drop dead or you got colon cancer or you got sick on any way, autoimmune disease, believe me, the last thing you're going to be worried about is the New World Order. You're going to be worried about your health. And so anybody who's screaming about the New World Order, uh, if it makes you feel uncomfortable or scared, that jacks up your cortisol. That'll Mm -hmm. eventually slow down your thyroid and and, and suppress your immune system. And that doesn't do anybody any good. Right. Bingo, bingo. (laughs) All right. So turn that stuff off. Just listen listen to the bright side. Cheryl, I I got to motivate here. Thank Thank you. you. Just one more thing real quick. My cholesterol has gone from 158 to 258. Okay, well, something's happening in your body. I don't. I wouldn't necessarily be taking a statin drug to lower your cholesterol or taking Synthroid to change oh, your no. thyroid status, but I would want to know what's going on in your body, and it sounds like something is happening. How old are you, ma'am? About. Uh, I'm 66. Okay, well, you, you know, something's happening. Something's percolating in there. Work on the digestive yeah. system. Stabilize the blood sugar. Take lots of showers and hot baths. Practice slow, deep breathing. Do a little bit of yoga or stretching or, or some kind of exercise. Make sure you're practicing spiritual, whatever your spirituality is, right. spiritual techniques, right. mental techniques, emotional techniques for health, all of that. Don't worry about the cholesterol and the thyroid, but worry, of, not, not worry, but focus on all of the generic strategies for keeping your body healthy. God bless you, my dear. Good luck with everything. Thank you, darling. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. I'm sorry. I cut you off there. Uh, Cheryl, let's go to John and text, see if we get John back. John, you there? Yes. Hello? Is this John? Yeah. No, this is Raquel. I was going to introduce John, but he couldn't make it. He couldn't okay. wait. What's going on, so, Raquel? I have been off and on. I've been taking Tangy, and, you know, I'm on the, the, the osteo, the feast and stuff. But sometimes I run out of the, uh, the sweetie, so I'm not on it. So then I go and buy something generic until my auto ship comes in. Okay. But I can't seem to control my diabetes. Okay. So two, there's only two reasons. I assume you mean your blood sugar is high. Okay. There's two, re- there's two reasons why blood sugar goes up, okay? Number one okay. is food, and number two is cortisol, stress hormone. When your uh, body sec- – and this is, this is important because this is a hidden cause of high, of high blood sugar. When your body is under duress, it will mobilize sugar from the liver, and it will produce more sugar spontaneously or, or on its own, even if you're not eating it. So if you are controlled your diet but your blood sugar is still high, suspect stress, physiologic stress as well as emotional and mental stress. Work on the adrenal glands. Practice relaxation strategies, slow deep breathing, uh, all the things we just talked about, hot tubs, hot baths, hot water, massage, use pregnenolone, 100 milligrams a day, maybe some DHEA, 10 to 15 milligrams a day, use zinc for the adrenal glands, vitamin C for the adrenal glands, focus on adrenal health, and relax your body. And that's all the time we have for today. I apologize. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Ronell Wood about her book, Touching Light, tomorrow. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.